The Boston Red Sox did sweep the Detroit Tigers over the weekend, but the sweep was overshadowed by an injury to a key player who's been quite the bright spot for this team. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Red Sox is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your own baseball franchise, then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up in any of your app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked on all caps in the game. What is going on? I hope everyone had a wonderful Easter to those who celebrate. I'm your host at Nessens, Lauren Willand. Thank you for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen of every single day. And it's been nice now to talk about Red Sox wins. The last time we talked, it was talking about the sweep from the Pirates getting swept right out of Pittsburgh, right into the series with the Tigers. And the Red Sox 100% bounced back. Yes. It's the Tigers, but to see the pitching do well, the offense come alive. But with all the storylines coming out of the weekend, it was not the 14-5 win. It wasn't Cutter Crawford's six strikeouts. It wasn't Chris Sale's seven strikeouts. We will talk about all of those things, but the biggest storyline coming out of this weekend was, of course, Adam Duvall. So he's been an incredible bright spot, to say the least, for the Red Sox this season. He's just been hitting home runs, he's putting the ball in play, he's scoring runs, he's driving in runs, he's doing everything that he really wasn't doing in spring training, but now he's doing everything that doing everything right, essentially. And that came to a screeching halt on Sunday. Of course, it had to be the last inning of the game. During the bottom of the ninth inning, Duvall injured himself on a diving play in center field. He left the game. He got x-rays done. And according to the Boston Globe's Julian McWilliams, he said after the x-rays or as he was having the x-rays, Assistant GM Eddie Romero and the head trainer Brandon Henry were kind of huddled around outside the clubhouse. Now, I I don't take that as a good sign, but we don't know anything yet. We don't know the extent of the injury. We don't know if the x-rays came back negative. We don't know. he'll Even if they do come back negative, he'll certainly have to go for more testing to see if it's ligament damage. This is the wrist. He injured the same wrist that he had surgery on last season that essentially ended his year early it was that torn tendon sheath in his wrist fingers crossed that's not what's happening right now especially this early in the season you you never want to see a player go down especially one who's been so good for your team in the first few games of the year but when I think of people kind of huddled around I I I think that they're thinking next steps what's next what can we do to replace him are we going to have to put Duvall on the IL so hopefully it's nothing but Mass Lives Christopher Smith did report that Bobby Delbeck will be joining the team for their series in Tampa they start the their set against Tampa on Monday night and Bobby Delbeck will be with the team so Duvall's probably going to miss some time it's not confirmed but I think we can put two and two together we can put all the pieces together and with Bobby Delbeck coming to join the team I think we can read between the lines here that Duvall is going to at least miss a few games here. We'll know more when Alex Cora does meet with the media Monday. We'll keep you updated, of course, on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox. Kind of what the hopefully what the timeline is. Again, hopefully it's not serious, but it's just it's just unfortunate to see because he's just been so good, Duvall, for the Red Sox. But Dahlbeck is here. He's with the Red Sox, and he's started the season in AAA Worcester. He did have a strong spring training. He was making a case to be on this opening day roster, but there's just so much log jam at a lot of positions. There's not a lot of room for him. So he did not make the opening day roster. However, now he's going to be with the team. And Dahlbeck should provide some versatility for the team, which they certainly need now that Duvall is hurt, because my guess is that they'll put Kike Hernandez in center field, especially with how he struggled at short in terms of errors. He has five errors in eight games, and maybe it's an adjustment, yes, but... You just, that's not what you want to see at a position that we, this all could have been avoided had they just signed Xander Bogarts before he even reached free agency. But that's not, I mean, it's not Bogarts' fault. He's not here. This is something that they have to deal with. 
And I think if you put Kike back in center field, you can really just kind of have him thrive out there. You know he's strong out there. You know what he can give you out there. Rymel Tapia is also an option to put in center field. He replaced Duval in Sunday's game. And you look at these errors from Kike, they're not they're not his character. Like this is not this is not who he is. Maybe like I said, there's an adjustment to shortstop. Maybe he's rushing these plays. Maybe he's just not a major league shortstop. Maybe he's meant to be in center field or second base, but I mean, if Bobby Dalbeck is here, he's gotten time at shortstop in Worcester. He's played two games at short for for the Woo Sox. He's played some third base. He's also played some first base. But I think first base, I don't think he'll even sniff first base because of Casas and Justin Turner. There's just no need to put him there. And I don't, I don't know how Red Sox fans would react, especially after last year, just how much of a struggle it was for him. And I don't think that necessarily having Dalbeck at short will – calm Red Sox fans fears because he doesn't have a ton of experience at shortstop. We saw that Kike Hernandez, who's an incredible athlete struggling at the position, but maybe this will be good for Dalbeck. He can truly show off his versatility. He can sit here and be like, this is why I belong on, on this team. And maybe he can carve out a spot for himself in the lineup. It's not going to be easy. There's all, there's still plenty of, of other players and log jams, other places, but this is a really strong opportunity for, for Dahlbeck to really show his offense, his defense, and show that he's turned things around and that he's not the player that he showed up as last year, that he's worked really hard to right his wrongs. And maybe he can be a serviceable part to this lineup. That's all we need right now. As long as Duval is out, you just need somebody to be in there and hold it down, hopefully until he gets back. It's going to be hard to replace that 455 batting average, the four home runs, the 14 RBI, those 11 runs scored. Duval, I, I cannot just say enough about how much of a bright spot Duval was for this lineup. And losing him certainly stings. But now this is Dahlbeck's time to really show that what he's been working on all offseason, spring training with the Woo Sox, that it can translate to an MLB level. He can be serviceable. He can help this team win games. This could really be something big for Bobby Dahlbeck. This could be his time to shine. And he could very well shine. It could go the opposite way. Baseball is weird. You never know what is going to happen. But being able to provide that versatility for the Red Sox, I think, is a good thing. And I think the more you can utilize him, the better. As long as he's performing. You don't want to put him at third because he's struggling at, at short and then vice versa. I don't I mean Devers that's Devers third base, but he does need days off too. But but now it's that kind of next man up mentality that the Red Sox need to have very early on in the season. This will give Dahlbeck a chance to really show what he's been working on and that that last year was a fluke. And I think that that's what he really wants to prove that he does belong in, in the Red Sox system or with the Red Sox big club, not Worcester. And he did talk to Jake over on Friday's episode about how he's preparing for the season, how how being in Worcester, starting in Worcester, kind of the mental aspect of everything. And hopefully he can just put all of that into good energy and it just hopefully it pays dividends. I want to see him do well. Of course I do. I'd never want to see any of these Red Sox players fail. I just know that Red Sox fans have their opinions on Bobby Dalbeck, and understandably so. We've had we've had our own opinions on Bobby Dalbeck, and I hope that this is his chance to show that I've worked hard to right all of my wrongs. I am fine. I can do it. I can play at the big league level. There's still a lot to take away from this three game series. We have to talk about the offense. We have to talk about the pitching, of course, and provide a few injury updates, all positive. So that is a plus as well. We'll do that all in our second segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast after I tell you about Ultimate Pro Baseball GM. Now, we've been talking about this for a little while, how much I love this game, and it's been so much fun. I'm not very good at it, but just because I'm not good at it doesn't mean I'm not having fun. And you can have fun with us too by downloading the game, playing with the host of Locked On. Play me, you can play Jake. All you have to do is scan that QR code if you are watching on YouTube. Pro Baseball GM is one of the coolest games I've played in a very long time. And I've watched baseball pretty much my entire life. I feel like I have a good grasp on the ins and outs of baseball. So I thought, how hard could it be to manage a major league team or be a major league baseball GM. Turns out it's not easy. There is just 
a lot on your plate all day, every day. But if you've had the same thought and you've maybe fantasized about managing your own team, go and download Pro Baseball GM immediately. This game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of your franchise. So you play through seasons. Hopefully you lead your franchise and your fans to glory. Hopefully you build that historic dynasty that I failed to do. In this simulation game, you are responsible for quite literally everything. You hire the right coaches and the staff. You manage the team finances. You scout and you draft the players, which means you also have to manage through difficult personalities. Who's that clubhouse cancer? Who's causing drama within the clubhouse? And of course, injuries you have to deal with, much like the Red Sox are dealing with Adam Duvall. You navigate your franchise through free agency, all of the ups and downs of a season. And this is all in a challenging and a very realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline. So you don't even need Wi-Fi, which is probably one of my favorite things about this game. So you can play on the go as you want when you want and like I said in the beginning I'm not very good at it but I'm having so much fun all of the other locked on hosts are playing too some of them have made it much farther than others some of us feel like we just can't even get out of our own way like me but Jake's playing Sully's playing the guys from locked on Astros Ethan from locked on Pirates everyone's having a lot of fun doing this it's fun to see how good and how bad some of us are at this game but locked on Red Sox listeners get a one 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code locked on in the game store. So make sure to check that out to download the game, visit probaseballgm.com, scan that QR code. If you are watching on YouTube, look it up in your app stores, on your phones, your iPads, whatever kind of tablet you use. That's probaseballgm.com ultimate baseball GM start your dynasty today. And if you're somebody like me who sometimes has free trials and those free trials turn into subscriptions, maybe you just have subscriptions you pay for that you're just like, I don't even use them. I don't even remember subscribing to this. Then you have to check out Rocket Money. Rocket Money helped me discover subscriptions that I completely forgot about that I got years ago, probably during COVID when I just realized that oh, I'm spending monthly payments on these every single month. Rocket Money helped me get that money back. Look at all the subscriptions I've been using for the last however many years and kind of get that under control. So Rocket Money is a, Rocket Money is a great app. It's helped me a lot. And you can try it for free for 30 days, just enough time to try it and then completely forget about it. In fact, over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forget about. I just told you, I forgot about a lot of mine. You could be wasting money and not even realizing it, but Rocket Money helps you find those forgotten subscriptions so you can stop paying for the ones you don't use. And I had no idea. I had no idea how much money I was actually spending. Do you know how much money you're spending on those subscriptions? Most Americans think they spend around 80-ish dollars a month for every subscription, but the actual total is closer to $200. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending, then you need to use Rocket Money. Like I said, it's helped me get some money back in my pocket, which is always good. I'm never going to say no to putting money back in my pocket. Rising prices, if they're stressing you out, if you're looking for ways to cut costs, then you need to use Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one convenient place. So stop throwing your money away, cancel your unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way. And that is by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. So there was still a lot to like from this three game series by the Red Sox. Yes, it's always nice to get three wins, win three in a row, go into the series against the Rays on a high note. And things looked good for the Red Sox. This this was really strong wins all across the board. They scored 24 runs across the three games. So the offense was clicking. The pitching was clicking. Everything, the pitching was clicking except Ryan Brazier. But we will talk about that. And the first time each starter took the mound, it was kind of iffy. There were things to like, but then you look at this and you're like, what is going on with the starting rotation? Things looked much better the second time through in Thursday's 6-3 win over the Tigers. Chris Chris Sale got the start and he definitely rebounded from an ugly game two. He struck out seven through five innings. He did start kind of rocky though. He walked the first two batters of the game on eight straight balls. And he said after the game, he's like, I don't think I've thrown eight balls in my life like that. And it was just very uncharacteristic, but he did settle down after walking those two batters. And overall, it was a fine start. He did have seven strikeouts. You obviously want to limit the runs, especially early on in a game. But 
it was a step in the right direction for Sale. Hopefully now he can just go into his third start this week and just build off of that, limit those walks and just kind of be the Sale from Thursday without those walks. Because that would have just been a dominant start had he not given up those walks. But he, it's, he's still going, going to be a little rusty and I'm willing to give him a little more time than I'm willing to give a few others. But I don't know if I have to give time to the others because now they are starting to look really good. And then Saturday's 14-5 win. There was some ugliness on the mound and not, not too bad because the Red Sox, they were, the offense was alive. The offense was hitting. So that's okay. So the pitching, they weren't relying on their pitching, but Ryan Brazier, who had a fine outing on Thursday, there was no complaints there about his, his outing on Thursday, but Saturday he gave up two hits, two earned runs. He did have two strikeouts, but why? I just, you can't trust him in high leverage situations. Yes, it was only two runs, but Thing, those two runs could mean so much more in a different game down the road. You are relying on your relievers to not give up these runs, to hold these leads. And yes, the Red Sox won, so I'm not trying to be too nitpicky here, but it's just, it's just, why? Why is he still on this team? And it's, we, we make jokes, we have theories, but you look, it, 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 I just don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. And yes, this didn't impact the outcome of the game at the end of the day. So yes, it, it didn't, I shouldn't say it didn't matter because it still matters because you're still giving up those runs. You're still proving to the Red Sox that you can't be trusted. But thankfully, the Red Sox won. The offense was alive and well. And we shouldn't have Ryan Brazier's outing overshadow Tanner Houck, who went five innings, gave up two earned runs and struck out four. Zach Kelly, who walked a batter, struck out a batter, and did not give up any runs. And Caleb Ward, who had three strikeouts in his inning of work. So overall, this bullpen looks good. You have some pitchers in there that are trustworthy, that have shown they're trustworthy. And they still need to do that. You're not just going to put all your eggs in one basket over these relievers. But it was nice to see a complete series, a series swept that had good pitching, that had good offense. And it's, it's just what you want to see before going into a series against an AL East opponent, a team that you struggled mightily against in 2022. So the momentum is on Boston side. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to go in and sweep Tampa Bay. But when you're coming off a series, when you just scored 24 runs, when you got strong pitching, and yes, you are going down an, an injured outfielder, so that's, a, that's definitely a damper, but you ha still have that momentum on your side. Much, I'd much rather be going into the series after sweeping the Tigers and getting swept by the Tigers and losing six straight. So that's, that is a good sign. I really hope the Red Sox still kind of show this competitiveness against the Rays because that's, these are the, the teams that you really need to showcase your talent with or ta your talent against. In Saturday's game, like I said, there, the offense was great. There was home runs. There was a Devers Grand Slam. And players just really kind of figuring out how to hit the ball. Duvall had a three for five day. Alex Verdugo had a two for four day. Arroyo went two for five. So just to see the multi-hit games, the RBIs, the runs scored, obviously Devers hitting a Grand Slam is always chef's kiss. We love when Devers hits home runs here. And then on Sunday's win, they won 4-1 on Easter Sunday. Carter Crawford had a very, very strong outing. He did give up five hits, but he did only allow one earned run. He struck out six. Kenley Jansen struck out two to get another save. Ryan Brazier did not pitch, so that is a plus. But Cutter Crawford looked really good. He was executing his pitches. And yes, you would like to limit those hits. But when you are giving up five hits and only one earned run, you take the, the good with the bad. And, and no one is going to have a, a perfect start. So he limited the runs, which was incredibly important. He's looked really good for this Red Sox team. And he thought he executed his pitches better, which he certainly did. He looked very confident on the mound. And it's somebody who had a lot of question marks surrounding them going into this season. And right now he's proven that those question marks can, you know, we can get our erasers close to it. We're not going to erase all of them yet. It's, you know, we're still very early on in the season, but this is stuff that you 100% like to see. That is something that's going to give Red Sox fans a little bit of hope and a little bit of optimism, especially after getting swept by the pirates. You come in, you just kind of dominate this series. And yes, I know it's the tigers, but it was their opening day weekend opening day weekend that's you know that is the the weekend that's the weekend that you have a lot of adrenaline you're excited that baseball's back to be back in your home park and the Red Sox just sucked all of that from the Tigers so let's do it again against the race right that that's what we want to see that's we just want to see competitive baseball and if they can take if maybe taking two games from the series is unrealistic I don't think it is 
but it's going to be a test for the Red Sox. And I'm really excited to, to see this, how they fare against another AL East opponent. We know how bad they were against the AL East last year. Let's not have a repeat of 2022 this year, but 24 overall runs in this series against the Tigers. The pitching was strong. And speaking of pitching, we do have a few injury updates to provide to you in our final segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. After I tell you about So Rare. So Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from all of the MLB teams. So you're not just confined to one team. And unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, score managers truly own their fantasy experience. You can collect, you buy, you sell, and you compete with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards. So it's a win-win at the end of the day. And there's absolutely no cost to play. Plus, the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and accessing next level competition and rewards. Awards. And so rare recently partnered with MLB stars Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez to serve as brand ambassadors. Both are featured in SoRare's current brand campaign and will engage with the SoRare community throughout the MLB season. So that's another really cool thing that they're they're partnered with with so rare and they're being able to come out and actually interact and engage with the community through MLB events. So MLB game weeks, they happen twice weekly in a span of a three to four day cycle. And at the end of game weeks, the so rare MLB managers who rank at or near the top of the leaderboards win a variety of rewards, which can include so rare scarcity cards, game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, and VIP experiences like meeting MLB stars. Prizes may vary depending on the competition. So head to SoRare.com slash locked on. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com to draft your team of free player cards. Set your lineup and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash locked on to start playing today. So even though the pitching has not been a major problem for the Red Sox, they are going to get some reinforcements back. Garrett Whitlock is expected to make his first MLB start this week. So we will see him on the mound this week. I'm very excited. He's coming back from that hip surgery. So I'm really excited to see what he can give. We all know that I am team Whitlock in the bullpen, but I am willing to give him an honest shot as a starter to see if he can really help this rotation. And listen, the more depth you can have at starting pitchers, the better. So hopefully all goes well for him. James Paxton also working his way back from an injury. He pitched in game two of the Woo Sox doubleheader in Buffalo on Sunday. He looked pretty sharp. He allowed two hits. He walked two batters. He did strike out three across three scoreless innings. So he had 58 pitches. He topped out at 96.2 miles an hour and looked really good. And that's what you want to see from him. Red Sox fans honestly have no clue what you're going to get from this guy because he's his season did end. I mean, it didn't even start last year until it was derailed again by injuries and he had to be shut down after a lat a lat tear and it was just very disappointing because when he's on he can be very good and he can be very important to this roster to this rotation and to the maybe even to the bullpen I, I don't know what their plan is to use him but to see him come out have a strong outing not get injured not leave early very very reassuring overall and then you have Brian Bayo who still had the forearm tightness and ended up starting the season on the IL. He will make a rehab start for the Woo Sox on Tuesday. So that is good news. And the hope is that he pitches six innings. So we don't know if that's this will be one and done. Maybe he'll do two, maybe he'll do three, but he's making positive steps. And I think that's incredibly encouraging for the Red Sox, especially someone like Bayo, who has a lot of hype around him. And he has the potential to be the ace in this rotation. Maybe not this year, but he has the potential to be an MLB ace at some point in his career sooner rather than later, but very good news on the pitching front. And we will keep you updated throughout the, the series of how it goes with Tampa, Adam Duvall and everything in between all right here on locked on Red Sox. Thank you for making locked on Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Please rate review and subscribe to locked on Red Sox right here on YouTube, Apple or Spotify, wherever you get your podcast is where you can find us. And you can also find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox, Jake at Jake Iggy. He will be back tomorrow. And then me, la 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's. Be sure to check out all the other shows across the Locked On Network, Locked On Yankees, Locked On Rays, ahead of the series with the Red Sox, Locked On Astros. Everyone does such a great job here bringing you baseball content Monday through Friday. We're all super happy that baseball is back. Thank you once again for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen. Now for listen number two, check out Locked On 
fantasy baseball. You can win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every single day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. You can find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcast right here on YouTube, just like Locked On Red Sox. Locked On Fantasy Baseball is part of the Locked On Podcast Network where you get your team every day day we will be back tomorrow like i said we will be keeping you updated on adam duvall we'll be recapping each game of this series with the tampa bay rays hopefully more wins because when the red Sox win we win we're happy you're happy everything is good and that's just what we like to talk about we like talking about the good for this team but let's fingers crossed for adam duvall that there's good news on that front let's hope bobby dalbeck has good at bats and good defense while he's here let's just hope for a good strong series against the Rays. until tomorrow we'll end the show how we always do keep the faith and let's go red Sox.